Morning, Killiard. Uh, one of the things, of course, that was trending, that is the peer, public service and gender CS, Asha Jumo, has extended Huduma Centre operations. Give us more details on that. Yes, good morning to you, Fatia. And uh, yes, uh, we received reports yesterday that uh, CS Aisha Jumwa uh, visited the uh, Huduma Centre at GPO as uh, her first day in office and made a raft of changes, really. He promised Kenyans better service. Remember, he had uh, told Kenyans, she had told Kenyans that uh, uh, they will be uh, introducing some reforms which include. Uh, increasing salaries for people in the civil service because ac according to her uh, there's been uh, changes in our economy and uh, she said that she knows most civil servants are really struggling to keep to keep up with the inflation and she promised that uh, for better service delivery she will be among other measures uh, increasing salaries i think in the next say 100 days and uh, w when uh, she went to the uduma center yesterday uh, uh, on monday rather uh, she added that uh, she noted there was a uh, these Uduma centers are very are uh, offering essential services to Kenyans, and uh, she ordered that uh, they will be increasing the hours from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. in 18 centers across the country. And apart from that, uh, that they will also increase the uh working hours also on on the huduma call center uh which uh, kenyans can access uh online uh also from 7 a.m to to 7 p.m just to provide better services to kenyans well kenyans have uh received this news with both uh first uh they have congratulated her most of them uh, for this move but uh only a concern from a few kenyans who are saying that uh uh, has the CS because they're not understanding uh, how this will work it's not clear yet if this will be in shifts or how the system will work but Kenyans are questioning whether she has considered the labor laws we you know working for 12 hours uh, it's quite a long time for for most people and so uh, many Kenyans are asking how will will this work out and also uh, they are also asking the CS whether uh, the people who will be working the extra hours uh, will be paid overtime or will have their salaries increased. So this is basically what Kenyans are saying, but uh, I think it's a welcome move from most uh, people ab apart from the concerns, uh, the few concerns that have been raised for there. Right, let's talk about Twitter now. We know that Elon Musk has announced that users who have blue tick will be paying monthly at least $8. Tell us about that. Yes, uh, you know that uh, Elon Musk acquired Twitter and uh, he has been introducing some uh, new measures to, to the platform and one of them which he announced yesterday via tweet is, uh, say is to say that uh, he will be introducing uh, uh, a system where people who, have, who want to retain blue ticks will have to pay for them and, and I think this is generally, generally a conversation about the revenue streams for for Twitter because uh, one of his concerns when he even when he was taking over the company was uh, how the company is going to to generate revenue without depending on on, on advertisers and now he he has come up with this measure uh, that will see at least uh, people who want the blue tick first you can pay to get the uh, verified on Twitter and you know blue ticks are very important especially for people who have for public figures and people who have a huge following. Uh, it's very important for, for you to be verified. So he's basically telling you if you want to remain verified, uh, we will charge you monthly. But this is also not, uh, I think, what most people don't understand. And I've seen that debate is, for example, in Kenya, will we also be first to to pay uh, that $8 a month? Uh, well, uh, what he, he also clarified is that it may not necessarily be a... Uh, a figure that cuts across every country but it will actually be adjusted according to a country's uh, purchasing power so we might have different rates in maybe in Kenya and maybe different rates in Ghana depending on how uh, they will roll out the system in different countries so we, we might find that maybe we are, pay we are not paying the same as maybe someone who is in another country so and some people have of course reacted to this including uh, Dr. Miguna Miguna, who has actually threatened uh, Elon Musk, who has actually threatened to to 
call for a, for a, for a boycott maybe if i will read this tweet uh, he says that uh, he will organize a mass exodus from twitter uh, because uh, he is saying that uh, Musk is wants to exploit Twitter users, and I've seen most Kenyans also responding to that uh, comment by Miguna Miguna. Some of them, most of them, are supporting the move, really. But uh, you know, this is a company, and it has to make profits. So we wait to see uh, what comes out of this in the end. Yeah. But yeah stories which are very very sad stories of course we know that davido's son uh, who's three years old um drowned uh, yesterday tell us about that and of course what happened also in the u.s with regard to the rapper takeoff yes uh, and, and and to sad news yes uh, uh davido's three-year-old son Nifiani, uh drowned uh died after drowning uh, in a in a pool uh, apparently uh according to reports is that uh, the parents uh, david and chioma were not around they were outside the house at the time the incident was happening and there were workers around the place and we are not exactly sure of how that uh, incident happened but uh, it's a very unfortunate that uh, the child drowned and we've seen uh, on social media we've seen uh, very we've, we've had moments where the david really has posted photos of him and his son very they were they seem to be very close uh, and i just want to read a few uh, comments message of condolences from celebrities uh, who uh, basically mourned with uh, davido and one of them says i hope uh, davido knows he was a great father to that boy and he's crazy busy but uh, always makes time for his children and another one who said David had lost uh, people he could die for in the past few years but this is the highest his son nobody can know what the mother and father are feeling right now so people are basically condoling with him uh, I've seen some people who are trying to uh, blame to cast blame here and there but generally there's just a feeling of uh, sadness on, on Twitter people sending their condolence message and on international news uh, uh, the takeoff a, a rapper in, in the Migos group which is made up of three people uh, Kwave and uh, Offset uh, died after a, a shooting incident in Houston he was at a bowling alley with his uh, uncle and there was a small uh, altercation that led to uh, people firing guns. It, was rep it is reported that at least five gunshots were, were fired and uh, the rapper died, uh, uh, was died at the scene rather before any medical help could, could be gotten. And uh, this is, uh, is an international, really, uh, international, uh, the scale is international because Migos is one of the has been one of the most famous uh, rap groups I in our time and uh, and it's very sad because uh, this is not the first incident uh, especially in america where we have seen uh, musicians and especially rappers uh, die to violence incidents we remember uh, tupac we remember big we remember uh, uh, nipsey hustle all of them have died in almost similar circumstances and uh, many questions have still been raised about uh, gun ownership in, in the United States and it, I, I don't know if it's this is a conversation that will end but uh, it's very sad for the hip-hop fraternity and uh, of course uh, Kenyans are, are very well they know this group this rap group and uh, really we all the best we can do is just to pass our condolences uh, says to 